Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Wednesday, which means it's time for a new viewer track review video. If you'd like to have one of your tracks featured in one of these videos, feel free to head on over to the description of this video, wherein you will find a link to the Discord, which contains the channel that where you can submit the track, and then I randomly pick from the pick the tracks that end up in here today, except for today, actually. On, long, on top of the seven that I randomly picked that will be present today, I also have one extra track I want to show off today. This is a track by uh, someone that has taken lessons from me. And this is not a case where I have taught this individual everything they know. They're very good in their own right. And in fact, the whole, per the whole reason I want to show you this is because it does so many things right. In so many ways that I attempt to draw a comparison to when I discuss things with this mostly just this kind of stuff. And I really just want to show this example of what I'm talking about. Um, the second half is definitely something, but uh, this is actually just a work in progress as well, as you pointed out. But, but mostly what's going on in the main bit is pretty awesome. So uh, this is um, uh, ban ban Bandles. And uh, the track name is Straya by a person named Bandles, and it is remixed by Subterranean, who is the individual I am talking about. Cool beans. Uh, let's see uh, what this is like. Play the beginning. Is that, is that going to happen? then okay so let's talk about what about this i like so much so along with the clarity of impact that is present throughout this track does not shy away from a high end like two things loudness and but also plenty of plenty of fun dynamic range application now i pointed out the low end uh, if you were looking on the meters here while we were while we were playing and it's because 
uh, it's not doing something that I am typically pretty, pretty adamant about. I'm usually all, I want to see the real clear delineation between the low end and, and of the kick and the low end of the stuff. But in this case, it's actually pretty well not that. Like, I'm not even really sure there's kicks happening there. Uh... Sure, right? So, here's a moment. And if you look at the base in here, it is actually a pretty concrete, solid wall. Not a lot of dynamic range there. Although, to be fair, I am normally saying that you want to see this as a truth before it gets crushed into the Maximus. The fact that we're looking at this all after the fact, I'm honestly not totally sure how that's going to look um, in, an, in an applied version of it. Um, the intention, though, is that we do kind of want to create this wall, but we don't want to lose impact. Normally, like, that's the problem. And this track, it just did so violently hit every time anything hits and it but there's usually damage that comes with doing that and then that usually leads me to have to say a few things things like oh this is super cool and nice and cool and loud but oh it's top heavy and the high, the, the high end like is too much of a deal but in this case this track this track does the high end perfectly and not only that but it doesn't shy away from loud stuff there are like there's like things that happen <laughs> Like, that is ballsy, and it is exactly how far it needs to go. I don't mean, like, that's how loud it should be. I mean, it can't be any louder than that. Like, if it had been any percentage, anything more than this, I'd have been all, okay, it's top-heavy. This was precisely as far as I would prefer to go to stuff. Obviously, this is an opinion of my own. If you feel like it's better to go more, than just understand that you are doing that. You know what I mean? Anyway, the relationship... Of all the frequencies together is pretty much exactly what I want, but it isn't the smashed, destroyed thing that usually happens when a person just kind of like gets what the ranges are and just kind of sticks the squishes there. You put your compressors and your bands up in a certain way, and you can basically guarantee any action you want will remain in a certain range, but will that actually sound like what we want? And there's a moment in this track. <laughs> this is that, that section. This is the section that really impressed me when it came to like an app applied to dynamic range. I mentioned to someone in a, in a lesson today, um, different student completely about that in about different choices of leveling in terms of separating an object from another object in a song. Cause like you have like two things that are the same note in the same range in the same kind of spectrum at the same time. What can you do to make them sound like they're not they're just the same thing? And one of them is to make a thing real loud, or real wide, rather, real loud in the stereo. And one of the things, though, is that that kind of creates an interesting level of disparities. And while this is busy being the wall it is, there's actions happening kind of behind the scenes in the mids and the highs that allows this kind of switch up to happen per note that doesn't, and it's not being threatened by anything. It's not so, this is usually the problem when things are too high. Or rather, really, these are the things that people tend to make happen that make it too high. That because they want to hear the actual, the, the all the way down there gritty, they boost it too high and it's too much. This, you can hear all the gritty, and it's not too much. The, like, it is very, ex exactly the kind of tight this stuff shines in. And it helps that all the material is also extremely well designed. Like the sounds are awesome. This is very, a very good work. Individual, subterranean, good, good work there. So this is uh, a little bit of a freebie. It wasn't a random choice because I already heard it. I already knew what it was. And uh, just, this is just the, the sort of that kind of stuff standard that I am referring to when I talk about things needing to be certain ways or types of whatever and, and how I, I am usually referring to like how I'm imagining the sort of good result is. Moving on, we have a track called Cursed from Crash 358 with track markers, yo. They are unlabeled, but you know, we can take them as they are. Well, that one's labeled. Is that time signature change? It's actually so small, I can't read it. I need new glasses. Getting an eye exam is kind of hard in the plague, though. All right, here we go.
This would make excellent background music. And in fact, are those loop points? Like, for that? Like, is that what that's for? Because, damn. I, yeah, right? Right? Good. Wow. This is nice. Um, and and you, you made this. You did excellent work with very hard sounds. And I mean that in multiple ways. Hard as in, yes, they hit hard and had texture. And I like them a lot. But hard as in, because of the, what they are, they are hard to work with. This was um, uh, choices, like, that you you took and, like, I don't mean, I, like, this is very good. I love every bit of texture in this. And it's entirely made out of stuff that I would have personally dreaded working with. Uh, just because I would have designed, like, I would have desired a certain type of way to go to certain kind of places. And I would have mostly thought of things like this as being, like, not necessarily mistakes, but just challenges. And you met them. You met, and, like, look how cleanly represented everything is. Like, geez. And it has presence and power, too, which is interesting. And what's what's cool, so sometimes we listen to tracks on, on, on this, uh, on, in this series, like the previous one, that are very loud in a certain way, and we go right to, like, a light thing, and that's kind of, it kind of throws us, right? It's like eating something spicy before eating something like a cake, or kind of like, what does it taste like? Like, I don't know. But, um... This actually measures up power wise the the mix on this and i can you can see in the waveform like how very up on it is up there sometimes when a lot of people will make this type of stuff they just won't bother to zero db it like it'll just it'll be and why not necessarily need to all the time but um it's fun to see that when you do it can match and sometimes it doesn't doesn't but with the material that you chose it would make it pretty hard to compete um, and still have its unique texture just not be what that other track was, but you did. Very nice. Oh, um, I also like how you didn't, like, this was the only kind of this kind of thing. So, when I, here's a, here's a fun, like, this has got interesting textural kind of application to it, but when you hear it, you hear a kind of extra texture, don't you? And, yeah, it's because it's this delayed hit, but in particular... Doesn't it sound like there's like a lower frequency in there? Well, wouldn't you know it, that lower frequency expectation your brain is filling in is essentially the space between these two notes. Like, the bigger and wider it is, the lower frequency that particular sensation is. Isn't that interesting? Delay, essentially. <laughs> anyway, fun stuff. Moving on. We have U U003 by Wodo. Wodo. Stops. Okay, here it comes.
like that noise filter at the end there. Yeah. Sorry, I was just very into the groove there. Like, I really like acid. I don't mean the drug. It's okay, the drug. But uh, the, this this sort of stuff is like my jam. I have always dug it. And this is this is actually kind of visually appealing as a, as, a, as a structure, as an arrangement. And it's, a, it's interesting as it kind of applies to the uh, sensation it more or less gave as a sort of a, a, a travel. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not that into what this is. So I, I, I my nuanced kind of understanding of its like value is difficult. But what I liked about this was... Like when this section came in, I started making a joke in my head about like, ah, oh, that feels comfortable. Like, oh, what's it remind me of exactly? And like, then this this section started kicking in, and then right then I was like, oh, it reminds me of Rammstein. And in fact, it it, it very specifically reminds me of the very beginning of uh, the Vin Diesel movie Triple X, which features them. And it's not even a little related to this texture. It's just the kind of the vibe that got there. I really don't know why. I could probably point out something about how all this came down to something about the time period, but I don't know enough about the genre to do that. Uh, as far as technical considerations go, like, I've noticed a lot about these genres that they do kind of rely on the kicks themselves being the sub, and I, I, so I don't know how well I critique how good or not the bass is in this. I always prefer a cleaner, louder, heavier bass. That's just my life. And to that end, I would have recommended that, but it just doesn't seem like that had been the goal of this. So I don't know how well that's a critique. Yeah. It could have used maybe one extra new thing before it ended like this. Like, it's a long time to have done just that. But, like, up to here, like, this was pretty grand. If it had ended maybe, like, half as long, you know, I can think of a better version of it. That This would just been a nice little capsule. I'm pretty much basing that on my experience of this genre, which is primarily as used in video game music, which typically sees it chopped up and short or looping forever. So I don't know how well that's a relevant experience to you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Moving on. We have Dub Switcher with Orbital. Let's see how we go.
that was a sweet ending. That that was that's how I end one of these. That, this is great. I love this. This is this is right up my alley. <laughs> uh, this uh, has basically the same kind of presence as that first dragon. I'm mean, using that as a reference. Maybe I should do that every day. I should have a reference track. Oh. Oh, but I, there's no way I could have a reference track for like every kind of thing. I guess I could just pick one for an element. I guess this time I could say I could say like this is this track, and the next one I'll do like one for like I don't know subs. I'll be fine. Oh, that's a cool idea. Okay, so this um this track does the top heavy like there's high frequency presence loudness burning in this track, but it is not top heavy. It's not too much. It's perfectly balanced. I don't know, except I, I there's just the too much of what made up the high frequencies in this track was white noise and i it got i don't, I don't think it was exactly this hard all the time but like this is an extreme example <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's just doing it for that but like you, you can definitely tell also like when that's a lot i do like the music and the lead and the progression by the way all of that is glorious not a single misplaced note, none of that progression was boring, nothing, no transition was boring or out of place or unrhythmic. Everything about the musical expression in this track, A+. Plus. Nothing to say about that, but that. Uh, your app thing in the MIDI, the, 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 the MIDI, the, the lead itself is just really a lot of fun. Yeah, so lots of white noise. So remember the, the danger I said about squishing the stuff together when you do manage to get all the things together is that you lose essentially that particular frequency spectrums, like that band's dynamic range. And <laughs> the, uh, the, the danger of kind of having a white noise layer be everything's higher frequencies is that there's not a lot of difference between it and being too much like loud or not versus the original track that we referenced for today the having a lot of this like airy presence that was at different levels that you could hear change and hear be different from one another that was the biggest thing and the problem with this track and like the i, I brought up the lead because i think one way I'm, like this problem kind of expresses itself is that you really couldn't low pass it like you couldn't turn up a little bit more because it probably made it top heavy when you did uh with how much weight is happening on like the white noise that's up there but if you manage to get the kind of presence the white noise has with the actual individual elements, this would have been superior. But of course, that's not exactly an easy ask. That's a lot of work. Um, and a lot of it was done. Like you can tell on individual elements sometimes that like there's definitely noise involved. And that's sort of the call. That's what you want. But you want it to be a lot subtler and, and different between them enough that when there is a sort of dynamic difference, it's expressed. Um, but this is sort of the outcome where I said that, like, you end up losing the dynamic expression, and this track definitely lost that. But it's also kind of the style for it to do that. It's sort of the style of the other thing to do that, too. But the point is, is that th this, it's, this is an example of what I meant, of what kind of happens. This track managed to, it, it's fine, though. Like, it's all exactly, like, the kind of result is that, though, that you, despite how high frequency present it is, this track feels low past all the time. And it's a relative power discrepancy. Like, it's just how much we're feeling on lows and highs and in mids all at once. Not necessarily the literal actual value. And it's it definitely a difficult task to kind of balance it in such a way that we can detect a difference. But, uh... Like, it's, it just sort of sounds like we're not really getting the full picture of anything. But... We're getting, but we are hearing enough of everything that, like, it definitely still feels rad. Like, this this track is definitely doing the rad thing. Uh, and for sure, the type of style that originated this type of music and writing was born of things that couldn't possibly express this kind of spectrum. So it's not as though, like, not nothing that we're doing is an improvement on an original style. Because it's it. So, good job. Moving on, we have Energize by Secure Hertz. Listen, whoa, that's my alarm going off, telling me to do the VTR. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. let's do this.
This had lots of cool stuff. I, I like those reverby leads. I'm a big fan of those. They were oddly at odd levels at some points that didn't seem to reflect the energy happening around them. And I wonder how intentional that was. But uh, I, the, everything about this track is like very, very commercially on. Like if you if your goal was to ever be a viable commercial individual, you have long since passed that threshold. Like this is... Like, I can't think of a commercial property that would want something to sound like this. And I, you might wonder, like, I'm always bringing that up about, like, commercial viability became a big success, which seems weird considering how very little I, of it I seem to want to go after for myself. But, like, the reason I do that is because that's, like, the fastest and clearest way I can say that, like, you're reaching what what could possibly be considered objective good. And it's not as though that is the bar, because it's not. Because people really like there is released and used and, and commercial products the actual garbage, but the point is is if you get chosen for one of those projects, it's because either it's someone in the project like what you did, or because someone made like the educated decision that you will appeal to more people than other like regular choices they have to offer. And in this day and age, that's almost anything because they have the hell out of like, you know, uh uh pfft, licensing portals and no no copyright sounds and that kind of thing and if like you can be better than that kind of thing then you 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 are good you're doing good you have made good music that's a decent enough threshold to sort of like be like yeah you could do that even if that's not what you want to do it's just a good way to describe that for me um and so there were some moments in this tracks that seemed like like I would have just changed so just really basic stuff like it's mostly point by point and it's, both, it's because there are a lot of point-by-point point moments in this track. Like, and really cool ones. See, a lot of that just kind of sounded like the sidechain was off, and it feels a little bit weird when they're on like that, versus like... And also, these moments happen enough that, especially by the time we get to, like, the next time through, there could be some more major changes to them. And even, like, pitch slides, especially on these reverb lead type stuff, like, because they, they will do fun things like that. Uh, but that's just nitpicking. I'm picking the nits in this one because this, this is fine. It's beautiful. And it's loud. Not really any kind of, like, I hear no compression flutter. I don't hear any of that. Like, the texture's cool. This is good stuff. Decent to done doing. Moving on, we have Fear Beyond the Death Realm by Traffic Cone. Okay, let us begin. Oh, my God. 
Gun Knees. Just as quickly as it came, it went. Well, that was loud. That was very loud and very top heavy. This is an example of top heavy. Um, I can tell. Okay, how do I know it's top heavy? Well, it's mostly by the fact that I, I, I'm witnessing the high frequencies peak. That's pretty intense. Um, that's just very high. Like you rolled off. I could see it happening, but like it's just not enough. It's just too much. Oh, super huge. Pretty much from here up. Um, but the actual material of what's happening is pretty, <laughs> I, I like the voices. I like how, I like how they feel. And it was pretty funny in the middle there, but, uh, it, it dragged a little when it got around to here, but like, it's just a perfectly fine, entertaining track. Like nothing really wrong with it. Um, I don't really feel anything about it except for that it's high. The high frequencies are very loud. And at certain points it just, I like, this is, this was insane. That was some stuff. That was some. That was some level that you tossed at us there. So congratulations for that. Uh, good jobs. Anyway, up we have next. We have "Are You What I Need" by Dylan. It was also a student of mine. Also another person for whom I did not teach. I don't even think the majority of what they know. Uh, at least in person. Let's try. To zoom it in correctly. Thank you. There we go. All right, let's see how we sound. Thank <laughs> you. 
Another loud one. This is what I feel like Apex Twin would have made if he, uh, you know, was born in a time where he grew up on Kill the Noise. This is awesome. Uh, the only thing, literally the only thing I would change is this background roomy doomy thing needs to be behind stuff. You use sort of this high frequency thing, and I gotta wonder if that's just the same thing. But, um, like... <laughs> it's on top of everything, and it makes... it. It diminishes the power of things if the power doesn't sound like it destroys stuff that should not have as much power as it has, in my mind. Um, other than that, like, literally everything else is choice. This is way too long and way too quiet. Like, it was cool when it got to be audible. <laughs> but, like, yeah, other than that, that's just that. That's, I, I assume you know how this feels, given... the. This is what's cool about tracks like these is like contained in here is moments every little second of things that sound more like something that I would have done, which means to tell me that you know how to do those ex specific things. You know, you choose to use them and that they also not your goal that you definitely had a goal, maybe, and that it was not whatever my goal is. So <clears throat> I got to tolerate a certain amount. Of, I hope this was a plan you had at some point at some point. I know a lot of this is like either not necessarily possible to arrive via plan or even necessarily beneficial to have a plan for, but that's how I see these things. Other than the fact that I see this as being dope as hell. Good to hell job. Certain moments of this were just like the coolest beat ever. Um, which like is honestly what I can say about Apex Twin stuff. It's not as though like I listen to Apex Twin things and think every literal second of it is like exact gold. Like the nature of the element is that certain percentages of it are going to be like, what? And that's to be expected. Hello, Sanic. Goodbye, Sanic. I like watching Sanic videos. Anyway, here coming up is uh, The Dive by Nero. I don't even know if you guys saw that. I think the way that my capture software works, you probably didn't. But that's probably <laughs> cool. Let the mystery, let the mystery be abound. It's not really very, it's not very mysterious. I like the game grumps. Anyway, uh, here comes with this.
Minnesota should go high energy first, low energy backfill. That's uh, that's something. And even I, I don't even really remember them doing a lot of this stuff this fast. They of course being Cohen Sound and Asa, which this is like a super direct inspiration of, isn't it? I dig it. I dig it a lot. What I don't really dig is these drums. Like they they they're tripping me up. They the 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 flip out. They have a f to them that I I I gotta wonder what it's attributed to. It's so very specific. I have to wonder if this is a texture that you just wanted. It's, it's not. It's not like it's bad. If I had heard this like seven years ago, I would have pronounced you our Lord and Savior. This was like, but like what, what I'm hearing. What I'm hearing now just confuses me. The, 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 there's a flip and flab on every single like transient hit. There isn't a single like a hard hit on the whole thing. But the hits are. Uh, it's like when you do a whip with a, a synth filter on a saw wave, right? You can either do a really hard pluck that's just like, bing, or you can do a, a swell kind of wing kind of deal. And you can do like how fast the attack ramp is determines how hard the whoa is. And if you do it fast enough, eventually, like it's true, you can tell it gets sharper, but it gets sharp before it gets completely sharp. There's an amount of like, yeah, there's still power being imparted that's high enough, like tiny enough, it's a high frequency thing that you, you end up feeling it. But in this regard, it's fast enough to be an impact, but just the beginning of sharp and not actually sharp. And it's, it's, uh, oh. come on, come on, Edison. 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 <laughs> to compare it to the Cohen Sound stuff, like, I, what I think is missing from this overall, this whole mix is careful, it feels, except for the fact that it's loud as hell. Holy shit. Is this an actual 32 bit wave file? Like how far above zero dB that is. That's intense. That explains a lot. Is this an unmastered mix? Okay, so let's talk about how to master this, I guess. Um, or at least what I, okay. I have, uh, look at your bass. You're some, I have so many questions. Uh, is this a mix? <laughs> I mean, uh, okay, because like what I would do at this point essentially would be just to clamp it down at zero dB and the decapitation would be enough to fill in the frequencies where this flub would become a, a hit. Did that happen? Is this before mastering? I really, hmm. So, I, you know, this is kind of a thing. Why not? This probably, this probably, I have no idea what your intentions were here or if this was intentional. I never do. This randomized thing is starting to be more trouble than it's worth, but the... What this is leading me to talk about is that, like, when I first discovered what the hell 32 bit floating point was in the reference of like 16 bit depth wave files and 24 bit depth wave files, I wondered, okay, well, if our whole thing is all about the zero D presence thing and we have this technology to not care about zero dB, what about what does the hardware do and what are we doing? Oh, well, you know, I guess I just answered my own question because if I did, like, and as, as it happens, it doesn't matter if the hardware, uh, it doesn't matter if the software is giving us this file that we're hearing right now. My hardware is 24-bit. That's that's not a 32-bit piece of hardware. I don't even know if there are a lot of two pieces of 32-bit hardware. Point is, is that I'm not getting that whole waveform. I'm getting the distortion. And that might actually be why I don't like it. That might be the, the sound I'm hearing that makes it sound bad. Um, I'm getting the turncated clipped audio. And that's probably not having a good time. I, I wouldn't know because... I, don't have a comparison like i straight up i'm hearing it differently than the person who made it on their system in a big way uh i uh, so other than that this needed a limit at zero db this was gold the rest of this was great this is a perfect groove like i liked the way it came out the the base was exactly on point like dude, good good jobs good jobs there strange choices on sending me a big file but i, I don't know if it just made it that way i i Either way, though, um, if you guys have any questions about this, <laughs> like me, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all of that fun stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.